Order. Before I call the Prime Minister, may I express on behalf of the House the best wishes to President Biden and Vice President Harris on this, the inauguration day. We now come to questions to the Prime Minister. I will first call the Prime Minister to answer the engagements question, and then I will call Alex Shelbrook to ask his supplementary. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I know members from across the House will want to join me and echo you in congratulating President-elect Biden on his inauguration later today. As I said when I spoke with him on his election as President, I look forward to working with him and with his new administration, strengthening the partnership between our countries and working on our shared priorities from tackling climate change, building back better from the pandemic and strengthening our transatlantic security. Mr Speaker, our sympathies also go out to those affected by the latest floods and I want to thank the Environment Agency and our emergency services for the work they're doing to support these communities and I'll be chairing a COBRA meeting later on to coordinate the national response. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others and in addition to my duties in this House, I'll have further such meetings later today. Right, let's head up to Yorkshire with Alex Shelbrook. Alex Shelbrook. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and may I start by fully associating myself with all of the Prime Minister's opening comments. Mr Speaker, will the Prime Minister join me in welcoming the fact that free school meal pupils in Elmet and Rothwell will continue to receive free lunches over the forthcoming school holidays, thanks to the winter grant fund provided to Lee City Council by this government? Yes, indeed, Mr Speaker. I can confirm that eligible pupils in Leeds will continue to receive free school meal support over the February half term. And this Conservative government has given over £2 million to Leeds City Council through the COVID winter grant scheme to support vulnerable families in the coldest months. And it is the intention of this government, this side of the House, that no child should go hungry this winter as a result of the COVID pandemic. Let's come to the Leader of the Opposition, Right Honourable Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I also welcome the inauguration of President Biden and Vice President Harris? It's a victory uh, for hope over hate and a real moment for optimism in the US and around the world. Can I also thank the, though all of those on the front line helping to deliver the vaccine, including the NHS, who are also doing so much to keep us safe under the most extraordinary pressure. Mr Speaker, it's 10 days since the Home Office mistakenly deleted hundreds of thousands of vital criminal records, including fingerprints, crime scene data and DNA records. So can the Prime Minister tell the House how many criminal investigations could have been damaged by this mistake? Well, Mr Speaker, the uh, Home Office is uh, actively working to assess the damage and as the right honourable gentleman will, uh, will know from the uh, uh, urgent question that was ha- held in the House only a few days ago, uh, they believe that they will be able to uh, rectify the uh, results of this, uh, this complex incident and uh, there is, they hope very much that they will be able to uh, restore uh, the data in question. Yes, sir. Mr Speaker, that is not an answer to my question. And it was the most basic of questions. It was the first question that any Prime Minister would have asked of those briefing him. How many criminal investigations have been damaged? So so let me ask the second basic question that any Prime Minister would have asked those briefing him. How many convicted criminals have had their records wrongly deleted? I answered the first question entirely accurately, Mr Speaker. We don't know how many, uh, how many cases might be frustrated as a result of what has happened, but I can tell him that there are 213,000 offence records, 175,000 arrest records and 15,000 person records are currently being investigated uh, because they are the subject of uh, this, this problem. Yes, Mr Speaker, I have a letter here from the National Police Chiefs Council. It makes it clear that 403,000 records from the police national computer may have been deleted. In addition to that, in addition to that, Prime Minister, this is from the National Police Chiefs Council. I'm sure has been briefed on this. In addition to that, 26,000 DNA records from the DNA uh, database and 
30,000 fingerprint records from the fingerprints database. So this isn't just a technical issue. It's about criminals not being caught and victims not getting justice. This letter makes clear that it includes data from criminals convicted of serious offences. It has impacted live police investigations already and it includes records, including DNA, marked for indefinite retention following the conviction for serious offences. Mr Speaker, that's the most serious offences. That's why it's indefinite retention. It's been deleted. So is the Prime Minister seriously telling us that 10 days after this incident came to light, he still hasn't got to the bottom of the basic questions and he can't tell us how many cases have been lost, how many serious offenders this concerns and how many police investigations have been investigated? Mr Speaker, it's becoming a feature of the Right Honourable Gentleman's questions that he fails to listen to the answer that I have just yeah. given. And, uh, and let me re repeat, because uh, he said that he, I think he gave a figure of 413,000. I've just done uh, some, so, uh, some maths in, in, uh, briefly in my, in my head. And if you look at the, if you add uh, 213,000 to 175,000, uh, you get uh, to uh, plus 15,000, which are the numbers I get, Mr Speaker, you get to 403,000. Oh, oh, oh. If only he'd bothered uh, to do that essential, that, that swift computation in his head, uh, he would have had the answer uh, before he stood up and claimed not to receive it. It was there in the previous answer, Mr Speaker. Uh, of course, uh, of course uh, it is outrageous that uh, any data should have been uh, lost, but at the moment uh, we are trying, as I said in my first answer, Mr Speaker, we're trying, uh, which I I hope he heard, but we're trying to retrieve that data. Yes. The Prime Minister complains about not listening to answers. The figure I quoted was 403,000. That will be in Hansard. So, Prime Minister, uh, uh, that was the figure, plus the 26,000, plus, I said 403,000, plus 26,000, plus 30,000. Let me try the next most simple question, Prime Minister, that you would have asked of anyone briefing. How long how long will it take for all the wrongly deleted records to be re reinstated to the police database? Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, that will depend on uh, how long uh, it takes to recover them. I can tell them that people are working uh, round the clock, having been briefed on this both, both by uh, my staff and also, of course, by the, uh, the policing minister. Uh, we're working round the clock on this, on this issue. And uh, any loss of, of data is, of course, unacceptable. But it is this government, thanks to the robust, the strong economy that we've had uh, for the last few years, that we've been able to invest massively in policing and to drive uh, crime down. Uh, and that is the most important thing of all, Mr. Speaker, and I, I have no doubt uh, that we will be able to continue to do that by relying on excellent data. Yes, Dharma. Mr Speaker, the Home Secretary said that the Home Office was still washing through the data. We don't know where the records are, and they may have to be, if you can believe this, re-entered manually, which will obviously take a long, long time. The letter from the National Police uh, Chiefs Council also makes clear that the obvious place to reinstate from, which is the DNA database or the fingerprint database, have themselves also been compromised, and so his answers need to be seen in that light. Mr Speaker, let me turn to another of the Home Secretary's responsibilities. Last night, the Home Secretary told a Conservative Party event that, and these were her words, on should we have closed our borders earlier, the answer is yes. I was an advocate, says the Home Secretary, of closing them last March. Why did the Prime Minister overrule the Home Secretary? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I think it was uh, last March that the Right Honourable Gentleman, along with uh, many others, was actually saying that we didn't need uh, to close borders. But as, as usual, uh, Captain Hindsight has, has changed his tune to suit uh, events. Uh, we are facing, uh, we are facing, and it's interesting that his first few questions were about a computer glitch uh, in the Home Office, Mr Speaker, which we're trying to recognise. We're in the middle of a national pandemic, and, we're, uh, and this country is facing a very, very grave death toll. And we are doing everything we can to protect the British public, which is, I think, what he would, uh, he would expect. And that's why uh, we've instituted one of the toughest border regimes in the world. That's why we insist that you have to get a test uh, 72 hours before you, uh, before you, you fly. Uh, there must be a passenger uh, locator form, which you have to provide, Mr Speaker. And then you must quarantine uh, for 10 days or five days if you do a second, uh, a second test. And uh, it's all very, I, I'm delighted that he now praises uh, the Home Secretary. It's kind of a change of tune uh, from the Right Honourable... Uh, gentlemen, I am delighted that he is now in favour of tough 
border controls, because he wasn't last year, uh, Mr Speaker, and indeed uh, he campaigned for the leadership of the Labour Party on a manifesto to get back to free movement, Mr Speaker. Of hindsight, what the, prime, what the Home Secretary said last night, Prime Minister, it's not disputed, it's not disputed, is that she was saying last March, this is not hindsight, she, the Home Secretary, was saying to the Prime Minister, you need to shut your borders. She was saying it. So I repeat the question that the Prime Minister avoided. Why did he, why did he overrule the Home Secretary who claims that she said last March that we should shut our borders? Mr Speaker, we've instituted one of the toughest border regimes in the world, and it was only last March that he, along with many others in his party, uh, were continuing to support uh, an open border approach. And I must say that the whole uh, experience of listening to the right honourable gentleman over the last few months uh, has, has really been uh, like listening to a, a, a weather vane, watching a weather vane spin round and round depending on where the, the, the breezes uh, are, are blowing. And we're getting on, Mr Speaker, uh, with tackling this pandemic through the most practical means that are available to us, rolling out a vaccine programme that has now inoculated 4.2 million people in our country. And uh, whereas he would have joined uh, the EU scheme, if I seem to remember, he attacked the vaccine task force, uh, which secured the supplies on which we are now relying. And uh, he stood on a manifesto, Mr Speaker, at the last election uh, to unbundle the very uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, on whose breakthroughs this country is is now relying. They continue to look backwards, uh, to play politics, uh, to snipe from the sidelines. We look forwards and get on with the job. Yeah. Yeah. Let the weather